afternoon. Uh, welcome from the amazing city of Brighton, 50 miles south of uh, London, the equivalent of uh, San Francisco or Austin. Uh, we have a great music festival here. It's a great town. Uh, and I'm in, well, these three gentlemen that I'm about to speak to, I know very little of, but I hear great news about what they're doing with their companies. Um, so uh, no, let's, let's just get on with it. Um, we'll, we'll start off, if you don't mind, uh, with Wes. Wes, uh, Wes Levitt, who's the head of strategy for Theta Labs. Wes, tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having us on, Monty. Look forward to the conversation. Um, yes, as you said, I'm head of strategy at Theta Labs, uh, creators of the Theta blockchain and the ecosystem that we're building around it. Um, I originally had a background on the finance side and was doing that for about 12 years in real estate securities and, and private equity, uh, but ended up moving up to the blockchain space in 2017 and joined Theta Labs not, after, not long after uh, their launch as head of strategy. So seen it grow from um, very early days uh, and, and helped build this out and also seen a lot of turbulent times in the last five years of crypto, but that's... Uh, you know, that's just how it goes to the course. And uh, yeah, so at, at Theta, we've uh, come a long way to building what it, uh, is, is going to be the, the leading media focus, media and entertainment focused blockchain. Uh, and so to that end, we built a variety of infrastructure tools for video streaming. Uh, for example, decentralized content delivery networks, decentralized video encoding. Uh, we've expanded into uh, the NFT space as well in response to some of our entertainment partners as they've gotten very excited about the space. And so on that side, we're on Theta Drop Platform, we partnered with uh, some, some great names like uh, Samsung, where we're involved in the launch of their S22. Uh, all the NFTs uh, were given out to everyone who bought an S22 uh, last month on our Theta Drop Platform, uh, Katy Perry, and, and some other great names from our entertainment contacts. So yeah, we're, we're looking to expanded to any use case that helps media and entertainment companies transition to Web3 and use decentralized products as part of their, their, their stack. Thank you very much, Wes. I think we need to, uh, to, to make a deal between the four of us. We're allowed to mention Web3. We're allowed to mention NFTs. Mm -hmm. um, but anyone who mentions Metaverse gets <laughs> an electric shock to their, uh, <laughs> to their private parts. We're not allowed to mention that word. Is that okay with you, Wes? Sounds good to me. Thank you very much for the introduction. Sounds interesting. Looking forward to speaking with you. Uh, Narve, uh, so Wes, where are you based? Amsterdam, I hear. Yeah, that's right. I'm based in Amsterdam. Cool. I like your plan. It's much better than my background. It looks like I'm in a morgue. Right, it's been incinerated to death behind me. <laughs> uh, Narve, you look like you're in a very beautiful place. Where are you? You're in Oslo, I believe. Yeah, I'm in Oslo right now. I'm in a small room, so I had to get this nice stage behind me. But um, yeah, basically, my background is uh, as well within finance or banking, um, insurance. So I've been working 30 some years uh, without saying how old I am. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I've been uh, lucky also to be part of like the business journey from you know the start of internet basically around 1993 and um, uh, you know started off chatting with my girlfriend in Mexico on Gopher and uh, making my first web page with you know the old-fashioned way with HTML and stuff and uh, always loved uh, the business side looking at how we can make things more interesting, streamlined with the customer journey and customer experience. And um, uh, the last couple of years, I've been working for the National Payment Scheme in Norway, uh, which is owned by all the banks. So I've been uh, working with them, looking at how they can uh, improve the value proposition. I've been looking at how, uh, you know, retail market has been suffering as well, you know, with, you know, what's happening where, there's some few big ones that's taking all the business away from them and trying to see how they can improve the value proposition for the customers. So, okay, understood. understood. So I, uh, I, went to, uh, I went to a conference in Norway a couple of years. Well, I've been to Tron time. I've spent time there. Um, but do you know of the Startup Extreme conference up, up near Voss? 
Yeah, I heard about them. Yeah, honestly, that is a crazy. It's the only time that I've um, well, I've done wild swimming in freezing water, wild water <laughs> rafting, and then I've been on stage about twenty minutes later. I mean, what it was one of the most extraordinary. Great country, man. It's great a good country. way to wake up, right? Absolutely, I like I like wild swimming really. Uh, Anas, you look like you're about to uh, fly a flight simulator in, <laughs> yeah. in towers. Um, that's probably not the right thing to say. Um, but we'll start that one again. Anas, you look like uh, a very you look like a very professional gamer. Tell us about yourself. Thank you. Um, actually, I would be short here. Um, I'm used. I used always to be a mentor for a freelance academy for uh, last seven years there where I met all of my colleagues here and uh, worked together with any, all of, all kind of freelancing, outsourcing, developers, designers, translators, anything actually. So this is where I start to uh, build teams, build projects, build technologies. Then we met with, uh, with Bullet um, maybe 30 months ago, and we start something with development about the privacy concept, about the security concept, and the, here we are today together, guys. What, what is the relationship between uh, uh, Theta and Bullet? And what, what is the connection? Yeah, it's... Yeah. Go ahead, I'll, I'll follow it's on. okay. It's, I will just start with something in short, and the you can follow up. It's, it's yeah. about we pick theta because we need theta. This is as a start because we cannot say something different than that. And when we start with development, we don't even think which which blockchain we will use. But after after written the roadmap and we checked all of the milestones we need to achieve. So we tried to find the best, how it's fit with their roadmap. And here we go with it. Where's the council? Yeah, it's, it's really uh, very synergistic with what we already built. So it made a lot of sense. Without going too much in detail, we can cover later, but part of what our network is, is the, the decentralized streaming and encoding I talked about is a network of uh, a little more than 100,000 nodes around the world that users are running that do all these jobs and part of what we're building out is decentralized storage on these nodes and so what uh the, the bullet guys are building to be able to basically productize that and have a uh, something they can offer to enterprises that that has private secure decentralized storage uh it fits right in with the network we've already built uh and, and basically does something that we already wanted to see happen we just hadn't built it ourselves yet and they were already further along and had the vision for, for how that was going to play out it's, this isn't like an investment or it's a, it's a partnership or how, how does it work yeah, that's it. Basically, they are building on a product that will use the data blockchain uh, okay. and the uh, and, and other parts of our technology that they're building. Okay, great. Listen, I've got loads of questions here. Um, um, just for credibility, um, I'm uh, still a writer for the Economist and the BBC about tech. Uh, mm -hmm. The Economist is my big one. It's the hardest one. It took me two years to break the Economist. Uh, I've written for everyone really from MIT Tech Review to Wired to The Telegraph to, I don't know, everyone. Apart from The Times of London, that's the one that I've never done. But I've also had an on-stage career. I've done a lot of stuff, you know, apart from the last couple of years. I mean, this is the, the, the last Zoom call I had uh, was with Billy Gibbons of uh, ZZ Top uh, and Hanson of um, the drummer of Guns N' Roses in this very room. Um, talking about Cardano, so uh, you're in good company. And the one before that was the Tim Berners-Lee, again in this very uh, scruffy um, work workplace. Uh, but I've interviewed Kim Kardashian in Armenia in 2019, John McAfee, who I regarded as a personal friend, um, Steve Wozniak twice, once in Beirut in front of 10,000 people, uh, mm. and again in Vienna uh, after that. So I've got a reasonable credit from the people that I speak to. Um, so I'm looking forward to finding out more about you guys. Um, Wes, would you mind if I started off with you um, and ask you some questions? Is that okay? Sounds good. So, so, so Bullet appears to be a great addition for your development roadmap. Um, but I suppose what I would like to know, as well as the audience of this, is what does 2022 hold for Theta? Are there any milestones that you can share with Bullet in particular that will help you in that roadmap? 
Yeah, so we kind of alluded to this before, but you built out a lot of the underlying technology for for some of these things that happen uh, to, for these products to serve enterprises, like being able to uh, use decentralized CDN to cut down their costs uh, for, that they would pay to Akamai or AWS. They're using decentralized storage so that uh, you can store something immutably that's not on someone else's cloud or is not subject to deletion or or censorship if it's something politically sensitive or something like that. Um, so we built a lot of the underlying technology, but th this big step forward we're trying to take this year is to productize it and to actually get it in the hands of the, the users, whether that's a big enterprise or sometimes in the case of like Bullet, there could be a lot of uh, consumers that want to use the product for storage. And so that's why we're really excited about Bullet because they're taking, we kind of had this idea already that, you know, one of the, the key concepts we have to take on this year is to get this really interesting technology to the next level where it's actually ready to be used by a user, not just an interesting development that, that's not productized yet. And Bullet was already ahead of us in, in thinking through how they would use uh, our decentralized node storage as a way to, to wrap that in something that's actually a, a nice in product that a user can just jump in and start using. So they're a perfect case of, of what we want to accomplish this year, which is to go from interesting tech that's being built to finished products that are actually getting used by, by the, the end users. Because of, I've done a lot of uh, interviews in my time and a lot of writing, this sounds to me like the, the really boring side of technology that is absolutely fundamentally important to everybody else. It's a kind of like yeah. no hero situation. You, what you guys are doing it appears to me, it's not kind of rock and roll but it's I, so vital to everything else. Would that be mean? I think that's fair to an extent. A lot of what we've built, it's, it's ultimately going to be used B2B, and it's products that under the hood can make a video platform more efficient or lower their cost or make it uh, easier for them to, to accomplish what they're trying to do and deliver videos to end users. They okay. may use something like our edge node network to more efficiently do encoding closer to the end user because it's done on these edge nodes that are local to your area. And then the video is served right to you from Brighton as opposed to from like an Akamai server across the world. Um, but that said, you watching the video on the video platform may never know what's under the hood. It's not necessarily gonna be a flashing thing that says this video was encoded by Theta. So yeah, it's not necessarily as sexy in some ways as a consumer app where you know, everyone and your mother has heard of it and it's taken over the world, but it can be very useful to enterprises under the hood. Um, just, just for my kind of information and maybe for the audience's information, what's an edge node? Yeah, so that's what I referred to before where it's uh, the, the software that we put out where they run a theta edge node. It's basically a piece of software they download and run on their device, mostly uh, laptop desktop for users, uh, but in the future, uh, and, and also uh, people running them on servers, like on the cloud, uh, but in the future, potentially mobile devices too. And it basically does all the work that we talked about uh, that the Theta protocol lets them do. So um, let's say you're running an edge node and there's uh, a video platform nearby that integrates the state of technology. It means that if you've got five other users watching the same video stream as you, your edge node running on your computer can if you're the first one to get it, can relate to other users in the area. So it's basically a way to peer-to-peer -peer distribute this video. Mm -hmm. Or let's say, for example, you get that video on your device first, but the other person in the area uh, needs it in a different bit rate. Uh, or, or you just have the raw video and it's not encoded for an end user to watch on their computer. Your edge node could basically tap into your CPU resources, do the encoding or transcoding work, and then ship it off to the other user nearby. And uh, the, the whole underlying concept and why there, there can be a lot of savings here is because um, most of these users running these edge nodes have excess compute or excess bandwidth or other computing resources that are just sitting there idle. Yeah. And they can effectively monetize that and use that instead of having to pay uh, your cloud service for doing it. So it's not totally unlike the idea of like, um, you know, Airbnb is kind of morphed into this whole other thing now. But you remember back in the day, the idea was, renting out space sitting there unused all day mm -hmm. so instead of it just basically not having getting any value out of it if a vacation home sits empty for 10 months out of the year you monetize that idle usage 
Similar yeah. thing, if you have a lot of computing resources just sitting there, why not get some use out of them? Yeah, that sounds that makes sense to me, and it sounds like it's perfect in the world where we're living in at the moment, where we don't want any waste. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, Nava, I'm going to come to you. I mean, where did the initial idea come from? Well, for, first of all, I, I would like to just state that I think what's happening right now with Web3 and what we're starting here is some of the most sexiest thing I can imagine. <laughs> for me, this is like taking back the control of the data and giving new business opportunities to all these uh, content providers and all these people that wants to actually do their own business. Uh, so for me, that, that part is, uh, I think is super sexy. Um, and the biggest problem right now, I think, is that basically uh, the whole business is run by a lot of very smart tech people or a lot of people that knows how to make some quick bucks and, and, and do the thing. Uh, but sorry, back to your, your question. Um, basically, we have a lot of founders that has been through, um, you know, the different stages uh, through internet. They've been living, you know, what's happening from the static world where everybody owned their own thing and then suddenly went to where, you know, these big companies started to centralize and, and had a lot of interesting uh, solutions for all these users taking over that, that, that data. And I think in that aspect, and we, we all know well, here in Europe where uh, there's been a lot of issues with how to protect the personal data and so on with um, GDPR and, and, and scrams, which has been a, a big thing. So right now we really believe, you know, how important it is for all these companies to be able to secure everything that they're sending uh, out and having that data themselves and, and knowing who is receiving it and all that kind of thing that we're actually using this tool for um, uh, is, is the main reason why. Because we live this, uh, you know, era within finance, within media industry, and we saw that you know, we're, first of all, we're losing really the connection with the consumers and we also don't know where our data is anymore. Yeah. So it's a huge risk. It's so much money spent on trying to, to secure what we're doing and then also lacking the, the, um, the customer experience in, in all of this. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're coming from. And I think that's the biggest drive that, uh, you know, our founders has in, in this project. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm... Um well, not co-founder, the evangelist of a, a DeFi privacy network called Sienna Network. We were um, we wanted to raise $500,000 last year. We raised 11 million. Uh, and I think the need for people to have privacy of their data. I mean, like, it's kind of weird. I mean, I don't know what you think about this, but if I owed you a hundred pounds, Narve, I would just pay you, right? A hundred pounds, you'd receive it, brilliant. Uh, but in the kind of, I suppose, can you say crypto sector, I suppose. But if it was $100 uh, dollars in Bitcoin, if I sent it to you, you'd receive it, but I'd see every Bitcoin transaction you'd ever made. And you'd see every Bitcoin transaction that I'd ever made. And that is wrong. And it's not a non, and I hate saying this word, anonymity, which is bad. It's privacy, you know what I mean? And I yeah. think that's one of the things that needs to be done. A data needs to be protected. We need to have privacy. We have privacy, allegedly, in every other aspect of our lives. Why should it be different in Web 2.5, Web 3, or anything like that? That's my personal opinion. And I've just plugged my company there. Completely agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Anas, um, I, have, um, I, I wondered how you fitted in with uh, the other two guys here. I mean, what's your story? Where have you come from? My story? Your story, yeah. How are you, how are you connected? What are your opinions of the, the things that your two colleagues have just said? Yeah, so with Polit, you mean? It's, uh, it's, yeah. it, actually, I will repeat whatever Narvi said, <laughs> but I can just add, we're looking for to be a bridge between the normal people and the blockchain and the Web3 technologies. This is where we can find ourselves add value and compete with this market because we 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 take on about a billion several billions dollar market market uh, about this cloud storage uh, data sharing security privacy etc 
we're talking about a big market. So to, to, to compete there, we need just to add value. This is where being a bridge between the normal people will be, will be something. Well, who would you say your kind of competitors are in that space? I mean, it's a huge space, right? It is a huge space, yeah. Uh, we right now, this is what we announced. We start as, as a simple file sharing system. This is what mm -hmm. we're starting. And adding and we monetize the blockchain and Web3 will open doors to be more creative about the use cases, potentials for this product. It's not just data sharing. It's just not file sharing. It's about payment. It's about, this is what we're trying to do. Uh, we have something called pay to open service. So we, we, we can include the payment. We can include uh, the, the, the encryption keys holding by the wallet. We can, so this, this is where we can be uh, really more flexible to add. It's not just a, as a poor file sharing system. No, that's it. I, th I think a lot of like blockchains are like an archipelago of islands off the coast of Japan or the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And no one can actually get on that bridge, as you said, or the tunnels to go through it. And gradually that will happen. So, mm -hmm. so I think, I think that, that's my, my opinion of that type of thing. Whereas I'd, I'd come back to you um, um, and bring it back into the entertainment space where we've seen mm -hmm. you know, a lot of strong traction, especially with NFTs. I mean, my opinion about crypto is that a lot of people got very lucky um, be by becoming very rich as well as being uh, ahead of their time. Mm. Uh, but I do know that in the entertainment space, there are a lot of serious people here, uh, Hollywood studios, music labels, whatever you want to call it, who are really, really serious about NFTs. This is not, this is not a fad. Um, I, I appreciate there's a load of, you know, guff, and a lot mm. of you know hype and all that stuff, but but the the people involved, are, especially in the entertainment space, seem to really know what they're doing. So so, are you excited to see you know the kind of thing expand into other areas and new industries yeah. like mine, DeFi and yeah. asset security? Does that excite you, and is that business for you? Yeah, it does. I mean, our our DNA is in media entertainment. We came out of the video streaming space. Our, our Early seed investors uh, were include Creative Artist Agency in LA and Samsung and Sony both invested out of their venture arms mm -hmm. because we were in the entertainment space. Um, so that that's our bread and butter, and that's what our focus is always going to be on. Um, well, we focus more on infrastructure, and you know, originally we're not um, uh, diving in immediately to NFTs. We always had the capability of doing it because data is EBM compatible. It's not that difficult. If you mm -hmm. really, really, if you have something that runs on Ethereum and a smart contract can be ported over very quickly. So it's not that NFTs weren't possible, but we didn't see that as core to what we were doing. But it was really a lot of the entertainment companies that we were working to try to partner with, all they wanted to come back to was say, okay, but NFTs, what can you do? You, can, you guys can do this, right? So eventually, you know, it, it's... It's not that we want to divert from our core focus, but when you have uh, great brand name partners that are demanding one thing, it's mm. kind of bad business to, to continue to turn them down. So um, to that end, Creative Artist Agency has steered uh, several of their artists that included Katy Perry came from them where they want to make this a big focus. They see it as a huge new revenue stream. They see it as one where the fans get more engaged with it. And I see it as an opportunity because we're pushing them to move beyond just a little image, a JPEG or a profile pic and mm -hmm. integrating it deeply into it. Like uh, there's another, uh, depending on when this airs, I, I probably should be careful to not say it, but there's another brand that we're gonna be announcing very soon that um, the NFTs that we're releasing is actually gonna be an interactive part of the show that they're producing. Like it's gonna be directly involved with uh, how the show plays out if you use these NFTs. I'm trying to be deliberately vague so I don't give something away in case this airs too soon, but the point is we're- That's my job to get it out of you. Yeah, yeah. So but the point is we're trying to steer these entertainment companies uh, to sort of like the 2.0 version of this where it's not just a little picture that may or may not be worth something, um, which those are very popular in the piece too, but we want them to think deeper about this and how it, it can be these almost more like we're going back to the infrastructure idea. Like it's something that works within your entertainment property, or it's uh, another use case that uh, someone is building on Theta or MetaPass is it, it's a ticket that uh, allows you, you can trade it, you can use it for the event, 
basically like an upgraded version of how tickets work in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. Again, can be under the hood. The end user doesn't even know that, doesn't even even know what an NFT is. And we're actually uh, pleasantly surprised how receptive the entertainment companies that we talk to yeah. are, where they, as soon as we started saying, you know, don't just, don't just stop at art as a cash grab. Um, think about all the ways this can be used totally throughout your ecosystem of what you guys are doing and they get it. And I think that might be one of the reasons why they are taking it seriously. If they just Absolutely. saw it as a bunch of pretty pictures you can sell for money, I doubt they'd be making like the, the investment they, they are into it. No, I agree with that. And I think it, it could go in some very odd directions, right? I remember when I was working in the, the start of mobile phones, you know, the, there were people at Nokia who, who mm -hmm. were so creative and so smart that they saw this as an opportunity for deaf people. It's like, how do you think like that? This is for deaf people. It's a mobile phone. I mean, obviously, if you think about it, vibration and text, you know, completely changed mm -hmm. yeah, what yeah. it was like for, 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 that, for those people that need to bracket them in a certain way. But it's that type of creative thinking that I think is going to, you know, take NFTs somewhere else. It will, will be something really weird. I mean, we've got the kind of examples of, you know, people, I think 59 million and all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're... they're, they're there are very, very, very interesting things that are, are about to happen, I think. Nave, I mean, what do you think about that? What, what's your opinion about NFTs? I mean, I hate to talk about NFTs all the time. <laughs> we'll try and pass on pretty quickly. And we won't mention the N word, right? We can yeah, mention the word free. Right. <laughs> well, what are your thoughts about it as a business? NFTs, I, I, I think, you know, one of the key um, issues right now is that we have all these kind of buzzwords where you can mention NFT and one person is thinking of, you know, something that is just, a, you know, you know, big, making big money right now and, and just selling it. And, you know, uh, it's all about like images and stuff like that. But it's basically, I think it could be any kind of business could be uh, yeah. in a smart contract where you have so many possibilities of doing a business related to that. So I, I think it's very interesting. I think there's a lot of potential of looking at how we can connect uh, also the, the real physical world to the digital world and, and, and look at how that can work. So uh, I, I am very excited about that possibility, uh, basically. Something came up today was a, 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 a Channel 4, which is one of the big four um, TV companies in the UK, uh, called me today to be part of their TV show, like uh, uh, Ultimate Guide to Cryptocurrency, an hour show, and it's like, God, okay, good luck. <laughs> Thick series, but one of the things that came up in the conversation, and I think which is fundamental to, to, to trust and the blockchain, is that it's all very well to say, look, smart contract, blockchain, there it is in code, um, you owe me, 2.5 million dollars. It's another thing to kind of to have someone to kind of endorse that. They could say, you, you owe me two and a half million dollars. Uh, it's on the blockchain. And that person might say, well, so what? I don't care. Who's going to get it off me? How do you think that's going to kind of pan out? Will there be a regulator or how? Mm. That's where we are, right? If, so, if, I, if I owe someone 2.5 million dollars and I was a bad actor, and that person said, look, it's in the blockchain. It's obvious you owe me $2.5 million. And I told them to, you know, go away. Um, how, how is that going to be sorted out? So I think that's a real impediment. Yeah, I think it, um, it kind of depends on uh, what exactly is the application of, of this that we're talking about. If it's something in DeFi where... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with cases where it's over collateralized and the assets are on chain. There's no question of will they choose to pay or not. It's programmatic. If you owe, the assets are already locked in the smart contract and you have to pay. But that's only that, that's DeFi. There's a lot of other cases that I think are more along the lines of what you're talking about, where in a, a real world inter situation with enterprise, it's fiat that you're tracking whether they owe them or not. It's yeah. not sitting in a smart contract necessarily, it's more like a promise to pay. Um, yeah. And in those cases, I, I, I think what it, the, the misconception of a lot of people is that uh, blockchain, Web3, blah, 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 buzzwords, and then we don't need the existing systems anymore. And that's not true at all. No, if, there's, if there's a, a, a 
it, it might very well be uh, useful for an enterprise to start using a blockchain system to track uh, who owes what or, or debt, uh, especially if you get into securitized debt. It's super complicated how it's sliced up and 10 people on it and so on. But it doesn't mean you still don't need a legal system so that if someone refuses to pay, even though there's a record that says they owe, there does still need to be a judge somewhere that can compel Absolutely. A, a company to pay. Like we can't just blow up all of the history of our legal system and say it's smart contracts now. It's like another tool that can be useful, but, yeah. and, and maybe the, the change that needs to happen is if it's uh, if it's on Bitcoin or Ethereum or uh, and, and it states that XYZ is owed, or in the case of Bullet, if there's a record on Theta blockchain that this, stored here belongs to this person, then maybe the court system just has to adapt to be able to say, now we know how to accurately yeah. uh, evaluate that and see who is the proper on-chain owner. But you're still gonna have to have the guys and the guys and, and girls in the black robes to, to arbitrate things that are not 100% digital. There is a still, still a real world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would, I would, sorry, Nava, I would take it back to Anna but when you were talking about payments earlier. Yeah. Um, and the whole caboodle. I mean, put me right here. I mean, I'm supposed to know about blockchain. But can you put in a smart contract, um, you have to pay this amount of money at this amount of time? Is, is that something that's part of a smart contract? Just just for my benefit. Yes, and, and we can look to your curator as well. So you need to look something in regard to, to get this in from the beginning even before getting the money and we schedule the, the, the payment, etc. There's a lot to do there. Actually, when I say about the, the payment, it's related to a service we will provide as Bullet if I need you to give you any kind of digital asset. So I need to send you a contract or a design or even a, a package of code. And I need you to, be, to pay for this service even before getting access to that. So I can do that using Bullet in, in the next uh, Come in the coming soon future. And there's something actually about, I just need to have a comment about the, the let's discussion with Wes about um, the, the old fashioned, let's say financial systems and the blockchain. Blockchain will be always a new layer of technology. It's not a replacement for everything we have. It's just in short. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. Nava, you were trying to jump in. Well, I just want to add that, you know, what one of the things that we added to Bullet was that basically when you send something, you can add any kind of terms and conditions to that uh, so that you make sure that when somebody receives it, they have to accept the terms and conditions, just like a contract, and then they receive it. So you have that, that part as well before they actually do a payment or they actually receive the file, mm. which I think is a, a quite important step uh, in our service and solution. Okay, so, so, let me, so I want to use bullets, right? I'm a kind of, you know, do, doing okay. Um, why would I want to use it apart from anything else? What, what, what's in it for me, basically? Well, a uh, very good question. I, I think it depends. I mean, it, as, a, as a business, I think, you know, with the background we have from finance and, and media industry and so on, you see that they're spending so much money on, on security. There's so much cyber crime and, and, and a lot of cases. So just that cost is, you know, estimated to about $6 trillion a year and it's going up. Mm -hmm. So just on the security level, I think it's a, it's, it's a quite important part. The other is privacy. Um, you don't want anyone to just get access to the most personal data. So this is uh, one of the, the ways to actually send that type of information, uh, you know, legal data or health data and so on. And then also that you have the control. You, you want to have control of your data and be sure that the right person gets it. Um, and also the simplicity. We are trying to make this a uh, much easier and simpler way uh, for uh, all our users to, to, to be able to, to make that secure um, uh, transfer of, of their file so, so that sounds like a smart email would that be a bit naive of me pardon it sounds a bit like smart email or my being a little bit simplistic 
Well, uh, <laughs> when we yeah. talk about data sharing, actually, Monty, it's everything. It's yeah, email, yeah. it's file, yeah. it's yeah. music, yeah. it's anything, any any online life. Actually, we're talking about data sharing. It's everything. It's not just yeah. email. And yeah. there is something about when we will publish our smart contract using the, this technology and monetize theta network. You don't need even to trust anyone anymore you just need to trust the smart contract or whoever who audit the smart contract which is will be third party to audit that and give it a rank and so you can check it and then use it so right now if i need to use anything anything today i need to trust someone there's but once you have the smart contract you don't need even to trust you just just need to trust the the, the code you know so, well, I, I think out of the four of us we know who is the coder <laughs> <laughs> we are just flesh just flesh and bone that's yeah. your <laughs> wonderful code um where's i'd go back thank you and and that was beautifully put um i'd go back to you um uh wes um maybe move it away from the nft thing uh, as we're kind of coming to the end um it would appear that Bullet would need to find partners to use their tech, what sort of their tech. Uh, and the Sandbox SDK package coming on this year, which I believe you're doing, what would it mean really if like Bullet signed a massive brand to their tech, and then a huge increase in transactions over the theta network? Would you, would you be able to scale? Would you be able to, um, would you be able to handle that? And I did some due diligence myself about what you're doing. And I came, I found this thing called T-Fuel. Mm -hmm. If you could weave that into the answer, I would love that. Sure. Yeah. So um, obviously it'd be ecstatic if uh, they are signing some large enterprise partners where they're using so much of uh, transaction volume for data storage, for payments, et cetera, where uh, I'd love it to have so much transaction volume that becomes from crypto to blockchain. Because we, we continue to scale, but it's not... Um, it's not, it's not a done deal, it's not a finished product. And, and actually, uh, depending on when this is released, uh, pretty soon here in April, we're uh, announcing uh, uh, some major changes to continue to scale Theta Blockchain better. Um, and and um, be again, purposely vague on that, but you know, it, we do need to continue to, to make changes and scale up to be able to take on these kind of transaction volume. Um, as to what it means for it, yeah, it's it's obviously beneficial to to the blockchain as a whole. One because increasing transaction volume uh, increases value to the to the blockchain itself, um, but also just because I think that's a huge credibility point. If we have uh, uh, a, a a project like this that sprung up organically uh, outside of Theta Lab, we're able to create a product that was useful to enterprises and actually you know put it to the test and was being used at scale. Um, says a lot about the credibility of data blockchain and also helps battle test it for other enterprises that are trying to do that. Um, and, and yeah, to, to your point about T-Fuel, so, so T-Fuel is the gas token effectively of it in the wow. sense of so it's like Ethereum, whether you pay a small amount of gas for it, T-Fuel performs that function for data blockchain. So it would be uh, necessary for all on-chain transactions. Of course, if they if their transaction volume scales up enough, they may want to look at layer twos that you can use on Theta to, to batch transactions and so on. But still, any on-chain transaction you're doing requires uh, a T-Field token. So that's sort of the, the, the basic economics of it is that more transaction volume requires more use of that token uh, and, and drive value to the whole ecosystem. No, that's it. Very, very interesting. Uh, we're coming to the end, which, I mean, I, I'm not... Kind of, I know it's not rock and roll, but it's extraordinarily interesting. Um, Narve, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, obviously, you're, you know, you know what you're talking about. You live in Norway. Um, how is this going to pan out for the rest of the year with Bullet? And what is the kind of what is the plan here? The, you mean uh, our roadmap going forward? Yeah, yeah. Rest of the year. I mean, we touched on it earlier. Yeah, uh, maybe Anas, I think uh, you could actually answer a little bit more about the, the roadmap. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I need to, um, first to, let's say, explain what's the current situation, what's the current status for Bullet, then what's coming next. Right now, we have published uh, Bullet Beta version one. 
this is just a proof of concept how we will how we will use this public private key concept to share the data and it's running bullet.app anyone can see it use it and test it and what's coming in q2 which is this year we will add the web3 integration so we will add uh, metamask connection and theta wallet connection so you don't need even to use your email anymore you just need to connect your wallet and go further to the next step to share data and receive it mm -hmm. and uh, then we will have the pay to open service which is uh, as i mentioned in this call you need to, to set up a, a payment in the process between the sender and the receiver um, how i can remember so and we we also have a business model. It's just for, it's for organization. It's for companies. It's not just related to the retail market. And this is what it's called uh, in the roadmap, the Sandbox SDK package. It's coming yeah. in Q2. We will have it. So any, any let's say, any small industry or small company can just use it to get the feel what's the Web3 represent. How I can share data without getting, uh, let's say, give up my control of this data as a company, as a, a client for this company. So we will we will offer that for, for the developers. Uh, we will have uh, developer portals and we will have a final release in the end of the year. So it will be uh, published for anyone to use. That sounds extremely exciting. I have a lot to say about the white paper. It's for 52 uh, pages, I believe, right now. So anyone no, no, just will come to go to the white paper and read it. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to make this my last ever Zoom call. It's, I've, I've hated the last two years. <laughs> you know, you're obviously an extraordinarily smart gentleman. We've got someone in Turkey, someone in Norway, someone in Netherlands, someone in the UK. Um, and it frustrates me that we're, we're not kind of sitting around a bar, in a bar or, you know, yeah. not, not so much yeah. an office like this. We can agree. <laughs> Let, let's meet in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. well, let's yes, meet in Amsterdam <laughs> or Brighton. You know, but I'm, I'm down for either one. Let me know when you guys are right. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so we're, we're going to wrap up a little bit here. So I think um, I've, I've got a... I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is that I'm using two senses now, right? You know, eyes and ears. Um, but I'm getting an idea of who's who within the three of you. You know what I mean? But it's not the same as if I touched you on your shoulder or smelt you or... Well, I don't know. You know what I mean? But I think we miss, we, we, we miss all of that. Um, so what I would like is just to conclude, maybe begin with you, Anas. Um, you've told us about the roadmap. Just tell us about what you think ultimately is the opportunity here between Theta and Bullet. And I'll go around the alleged table for those for that question. Over to you, Anas. Actually, Narva is the best to, to, to say about potential because he is very passionate about what's okay. next, what's Let's coming, how to monetize <laughs> okay. Bullet, how to use it. Mm. Well, I, I, you know, like, like I mentioned before, I mean, we're just super passionate about this opportunity to work together with Theta. Uh, I mean, we believe that uh, the services uh, they are offering with video streaming and data storage is like the most important service for the future um, Web3 direction. And, you know, the, you know, it, we fit really good together also. Yeah. That, you know, the speed and the low gas price they have is also like a uh, very uh, no-brainer for us. Uh, they built a, a strong network uh, that is well known and they have an example of a powerful, a stable and engaged community, which is uh, super important. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I think that Theta is the most uh, compatible with the roadmap that Anas was just uh, talking about. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm, you know, we, we are super excited and uh, we just, look forward to be able to to, to take the next steps uh, uh, to prove and to get more exciting use cases where you see real businesses, real people start okay. using the applications and start actually uh, looking at how they can make uh, a new potential business uh, through uh, these services that we are providing. Uh, because I'm just looking forward to, to Um, and, yeah, also, yeah. and also working a lot on 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 the the UX the, the customer experience improving that part because I think that's one of the biggest hurdles right now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things. It's like many people that have to decide on so many things. They have to decide on what project, what platform, what uh, wallet, and so on. 
before they can do anything. Yeah. And I think we are one of those players that can work together with Theodore on looking at how that could be a lot easier. Uh, because there shouldn't be that many options uh, before uh, you get uh, a transaction. I think at, at the end of the day, the user doesn't really give a shit. You know, they exactly. just want, want these things to work and with, with every technology. Well, I think the final word goes to Wes as he's agreed to host our next meetup and our next interview and session in Amsterdam. Bearing in mind, he's going to be paying for everything, uh, paying for the hotels, paying for the drinks, paying for, <laughs> paying for all the food. And I think we'd better hand it over to Wes to, to sign us off with some words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely treat you guys to a nice dinner and drinks. We'll talk about the hotel offline. That may be a step <laughs> too far, but regardless, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, Monty, that it's been it's been a long couple of years. And while it is awesome that the four of us in the country can easily have this conversation, uh, looking back to the conferences, getting back on mm -hmm. uh, into Paris blockchain next week, and getting back to you know really developing relationships uh, uh, in person. It's as yeah. much as we're all building uh, technology that connects people or connects with the companies, we still don't want to forget that it's a lot more fun in person. So, yeah, we're, we're excited for things like Bullet. I, I mostly just echo what Narvis said that it's, it's uh, we're excited to, for, to move from the technology phase to actually products in the hands of consumers. Data yeah. Labs, we're most of technologists. I stick out as, as someone with a business background, but the majority are engineers uh, and very good at building technology. But the next step that needs to come is for other teams like the, the guys at Bullet to, to turn this into something that makes sense that a consumer actually wants to use, even if they don't even care or know what a blockchain is. So Absolutely. That, that's Absolutely. going to be a, a, a what we're excited to see in, in, in this year. Well, listen, um, after an hour of you three gentlemen, I have no doubt that you're going to change the world. Um, I hope to, you know, to find out more as you go forward. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, next time, maybe I'll be in a slightly less <laughs> metaverse. Um, I had to say it, sorry. Um, uh, Jared, how, about, uh, how about we agree next time? On no, well, that's because, but that's because I'm now paying for dinner. <laughs> said it. It's on me. Obviously, you're, um, it would be lovely to see you in London as well. I wish you all the best. Um, and I'll be watching for the rest of the year, um, hopefully introduce you to some people uh, that might like to cover you, you know, the likes of TechCrunch and Wired and all that stuff. Happy to help. Uh, but it's been fascinating for me. I mean, it's not my core subject, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, but you've certainly interested in me and what you're doing. I wish you all the best. Uh, and happy Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you for allowing me to speak to you. I, I appreciate it. My last ever Zoom call. <laughs> That's That's historic. Thank you so See you much. Guys. See you later. Oh, Thank, Thank you. Nice you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.